Good evening to you viewers. Welcome to join us in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television. Tonight we talk about the Cameroonian government that has so far expressed regret over the killing of the police officer in the East region by the Seleka rebels. And also in this newscast, the government has announced measures to improve on the country's aquaculture. And the Minister of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Husbandry, Dr. Tiger, was speaking here in the economic capital dweller today in a meeting. These are headlines, details and more just in a moment. Thank you once again, viewers, for joining us in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on ETV. We begin right away in politics. The administrative bench of the Supreme Court in Yaoundé Centre region of the country has ruled over close to 240 submitted petitions four days after deliberations opened in that part of the country. The Supreme Court's rulings has uh, so far been favorable in some 25 petitions or on some 25 petitions that were filed in for the municipal elections. The court has ordered for the reinstatement of the lease of uh, Padek of Jean de Dieu Momo in the Douala 5 area and also some of the submitted petitions of the MREC after the other uh, free files that were equally accepted by the administrative bench of the Supreme Court. And just to add that Lego mines in Yaoundé Centre region of the country have expressed worries over what they termed imperfections observed in the application of the Electoral Court. This is after the court rejected some documents which had the mistakes that were found in some of the files that were accepted. Let's have details of that report with Roland Akon. Of what use are the administrative courts in the regions when all 267 litigations for council elections are lodged in Yaoundé. Administrative litigations are supposed to be before the administrative courts. Which administrative courts are functional? The 10 regions have 10 administrative courts. Why is it that this administrative litigation is now being held hostage by the administrative bench of the Supreme Court? That is the question. Another disturbing issue to the legal minds is that no party has a signed list published by Eleka. But There was a case of gender in a constituency where the CPDM brought in two females, which is against the law. We petitioned that the list should be cancelled because it violates that provision of the law. But what happened? In court, Elekam came and said, no, this was a material error which they discovered after publication and they have corrected. And they now remove a paper from their file and say this is the right list. So we don't even know if the list that the court is using is the list that Elekam has in its file or it is the list that was published by the Cameroon Tribune. Then there is the concept of sociological component. It's the sociological component of this, uh, uh, these elections. You know, there was a Locus Classicus case of Bali in 2007 where it was falsely argued that um, the sociological component of each council must be reflected in the list of candidates. That is why the SDF list was thrown out in Bali, because the Bago community was not included in the SDF list. So this time around, the court has turned all a full cycle to disregard this issue. For example, the situation of Bacham, where the, there was a pertinent case of an Mbororo boy, uh, the Mbororo community that was left out totally in the list. And the court unfortunately ruled that it was of no event. In fact, and you can quote lots and lots of other situations like that and then there are fears of injustice what we go through here the lord have mercy what we go through here is that we see a case where particularly the ruling party is being kind of like baby fed everything is done in order to see that the the ruling party has its way through the court is also blamed for giving rooms for political prostitution Section 184 says if you, have be if you belong to one political party, you cannot again militate in another political party. And the administrative bench and the constitutional council says you are free to come and go at will. Therefore, we are promoting political prostitution. In other words, politicians can become bats. At one strength is an animal, at another strength is a bird. So I don't know where we are heading to. I don't know. 
is really, really embarrassing and ridiculous. The legal minds are making the following proposals. The way forward is, as far as administrative litigation is concerned, in future, let the cases go back to the administrative courts. Two, let us create a law reform commission in this country, whereby if the administrative bench or the Supreme Court or anybody, even a lawyer, if you find that the, this law is not well interpreted, you run. Legal minds have been reacting over what they, are, they have termed the imperfections of uh, the Supreme Court as far as the country's electoral code is concerned. Now, the Cameroon Central African Republic frontier has remained closed following the instructions from the East Regional Governor. This was after a Cameroonian police officer was killed in Toktoyo by some Seleka rebels from Bangui. The government, in an outing today, expressed regret and sympathy over the death of the police officer. The government spokesperson Isa Shuma Bakari maintained that a cordial relationship still exists between Cameroon and Bangui, through, although the boundary would remain close till further notice. Some transporters plying the Cameroon Bangui Highway had early today called for the reopening of the border that had remained closed for days now, thereby paralyzing activities. And transport unionists in Cameroon have denounced what they have described as laxity by the government in decisions concerning the sector. They protested in a meeting in Yaoundé Centre region of the country after the government forcefully imposed a spokesperson on them. Let's have details with uh, Roland Akong in Yaoundé. <laughs> The wrath of these transport unionists follows a decision by transport authorities to impose a spokesperson to speak on behalf of their union. We did not succeed in our attempts to find out why transport authorities took such a decision. The unionists described the move as an insult and walked out of the meeting. The meeting grouped stakeholders in the transport sector to discuss ways of curbing road accidents in Cameroon. The unionists say it confirms that government never associates transport unionists when taking important decisions. They cited, among others, the recent decision by government on the importation of motorbikes in Cameroon. They tried to boycott the meeting forced the government to reinstate the real spokesperson of the union. In his speech, the spokesperson condemned government for taking unilateral decisions concerning transport unions in Cameroon. And here in the economic capital, Douala container fell early today around Carrefour Ajib, precisely at the AGBC entrance. The neighborhood is practically inaccessible for containers as well as larger vehicles, but the locals complain that they keep or they keep penetrating the area on a daily basis. No human life, unfortunately, was endangered, but the said container has remained in the area since early today. And the government has announced plans to boost the to boost the country's aquaculture, which has before now been unable to produce enough fish for the Cameroonian population. The Minister for Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Husbandry, Dr. Tiger, was speaking in the economic capital Douala today. As for Hansen Chanji tells us in the following report. The fishing sector in Cameroon is experiencing dwindling fortunes as the country is unable to produce fish to the need of the population. Statistics shows that Cameroon imports more than half of our fish from abroad, thereby constituting a major capital flight. Cameroon spends more than 100 billion to import fish annually. Despite the numerous possibilities of Cameroon to produce catfish, it still imports it from China. There are several measures that are in place. It is against this backdrop that the Minister for Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Husbandry, Dr. Tiger, said the government of Cameroon is planning to improve on its fight to rehabilitate the fishing sector. He also said plans are on the way to build new fishing points and opening of schools to train Cameroonians 
to become experts in the sector. Experts say the rational management of fisheries could bring more nutritional, economic and social benefits to Cameroon. Whether or not this benefit can be realized in the near future would depend on the Fishery Administration's commitment to look for the best scientific solution, establish appropriate policies and select the best fishery objectives. If not, Cameroon will continue to depend on imported fish. For Hansen Chanji, the reporting meantime, the Ministry of Livestock, Steel, Fisheries and Animal Husbandry now has a handbook to guide uh, users seeking for services in both the central and regional services of the ministry. The 10-page document, which is available only in the French language, was presented to the public by Dr. Tiger, the Minister for Livestock, during an event at the ministry in the Yaoundé Centre region of the country that was yesterday. Now in the following excerpt, the Chief of Evaluation and Performance at the Ministry of Livestock, Moses Ebay, now explains that the document could help curb the high rate of corruption in the said ministry. Let's listen to what he had to say. The most important thing of, uh, of that document is transparency. Yeah, it's too transparent in, 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 in such a way that if you need uh, anything from the ministry which you have to pay maybe a thousand francs it is written there that you have to pay a thousand francs so that nobody should come and tell you it's ten thousand if a document has to be produced within uh, 30 days that document will be, will be produced within 30 days because all the processes are there no step will be escaped but you the you the user you must respect the criteria of maybe if they, if, if, if they ask you to, to produce certain documents, you need to produce all of those documents. Still in Yaoundé Centre region of the country, the Minister of Trade has harmonized the prices of books to be used this academic year, that is the academic year 2013-2014. The measure was explained to the press in a briefing which took place in that part of the country, as Roland Akon tells us in the following report. This briefing with the press by Trade Minister Luke Magloire Mbagaratangana aims to ensure that books are available and sold affordably at unique prices this academic year. The implementation of the measure on the ground seems effective. We work according to function of the ministry, here. so we don't sell books at more than the ministry prices that they offer us to give. So when any parent come here, we also have an area where we show them to look into the block and the, look the prices. So the prices there according to how the ministry has ordered us to look into. Of the over 1,300 books in the English subsystem of education, the prices of over 700 have been homologated. We noticed on the ground that some of the books are not yet available in some bookshops. Some of the books this year have been revised, so it's taken a, long, a little bit longer time for some authors to release the books to us. But the promise they've given us is before the end of this week, we'll have all the books in our, our custody. Reporters sought to know from the minister why new books are introduced on the book list each year, and he attributed it uh, Madame, the evolution uh, of lessons and technology. In news out of Cameroon, we take you straight away to the Middle East. Former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak has been released from prison after appealing against his detention. He was flown out of the prison to a hospital but is now expected to be put under house arrest. The 85-year-old still faces charges of corruption and complicity in the killing of demonstrators during the protests that toppled him in 2011. His release is seen by many as a sign that the military is rolling back the charges that uh, or the changes that followed the uprising in Egypt. Still out of our national boundaries, Robert Mugabe has been sworn in uh, for the seventh term into office as Zimbabwe's president. Today was declared as a public holiday to permit his supporters uh, or the supporters of the 89-year-old attend the inauguration ceremony. Let's have details of that report with uh, Franz Bernkart. It's his sixth presidential inauguration. Zimbabweans packed out the national stadium to watch Robert Mugabe being sworn in for a new five-year term. Zimbabwean democracy 
is made for the people of Zimbabwe who must, within certain periods, go to the polls to choose and install a government of their choice. But the opposition leader, Morgan Shangarai, insists the July vote was full of fraud and shunned the swearing in. Instead of celebration, there is mourning, there is national mourning in this country. Shangarai says the electoral roll was rigged, allowing some citizens to vote twice while others weren't registered and couldn't vote at all. How can we cheat like this? Opposition former finance minister Tendai Biti claims this footage shows unregistered youths arriving at his constituency, having been bussed in from rural areas and paid to vote Mugabe. Shangarai withdrew a legal challenge to the results last week. He says he won't get a fair hearing because all Zimbabwe's judges were appointed by Mugabe. But the regional body which oversaw the vote deemed it free and fair. On behalf of the entire Sadek family, I wish to sincerely congratulate Zek and the people of Zimbabwe for holding a free and a peaceful, harmonized elections on the 31st of July 2013. Western countries continue to hold sanctions against Zimbabwe, but Mugabe can look east. Smiling for the cameras, China's special envoy was in Harare on Wednesday, pledging support to Zimbabwe's economic and social development. And that piece of information out of Candy Country brings us to the end of this segment of the news. But up next is Talking Point. Thank you once again, viewers, for joining us tonight on Talking Point. We are going to be talking about uh, uh, academics tonight, barely two weeks to the start of the academic year 2012-2013. A general assembly of lay private schools in the littoral region took place today to redress some of the problems of lay private schools in the region and also look at how uh, to redress uh, some of the problems and also propose necessary solutions to ensure a smooth unfolding of the next academic academic school year. Our guest tonight is an educationist who also took part in the set gathering here in the economic capital Dwala. Good evening to you, uh, Professor Samuel Ngube, and thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Good evening, Midi, Mimi, and uh, thank you for having me once more in Equinox TV. I should be thanking you for coming, just to add that you were part of the meeting that took place here in the economic capital Dwala. Yes. And just to find out from you, what were some of the highlights of the meeting? Um, as usual, uh, the General Assembly of the lay private schools in the littoral region uh, always take place uh, every beginning of the school year. And uh, this time again, um, uh, the Secretary, uh, Mr. Basson, has respected the tradition by organizing uh, a General Assembly of these uh, lay private schools in the littoral. So many things were highlighted in this meeting especially by the regional delegate of uh, secondary school education, Mr. Guillaume, who insisted in so uh, many uh, points that are tarnishing the image of the lay private schools in our own country, for instance, and in particularly in Douala or in the littoral region. For instance, um, he insisted and uh, invited or instructed all the proprietors to make sure that they uh, recruit uh, good principals in their schools because uh, some of these principals are uh, for sometimes canker worms that are giving uh, problems to lay private in, in our own lay private education schools. So he insisted and uh, instructed the proprietors to recruit good principals who will respect the calendar of the, the, the school calendar of the year, who will respect uh, 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 the, the way or the rules and regulation being put in their various schools uh, uh, in such a way that parents should not be duped like in those days or in last year when uh, of so many cases that we, we do record, uh, we don't want to have that this year. So the, What's the, the, the guarantee day? that it's going to be avoided this year when you are talking of a similar meeting that has been holding? between lay private uh, education or proprietors of lay private institutions in the economic capital dollar. If you have been having previous meetings but having the same results, what's the guarantee? What was peculiar about today's meeting? Thank you very much, Mimi. I think this year is just a particular one because uh, you, peop you 
the media assisted uh, in a particular, the same uh, particular meeting being uh, organized by the regional delegate, I think that was two weeks ago or three weeks ago, and uh, again, uh, the General Assembly of the Lane Private Education coming up again uh, this time. I think these, uh, uh, these, these various meetings are going to have an impact uh, in our own school, a smooth school running in the late private sector this year. As I was saying, so many things were really highlighted by the delegate and by the Secretary of Lay Private Education that uh, really we don't want to have such situations this year like the mal, uh, the functioning of uh, 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 the functioning of uh, the clandestine schools in the littoral region, which is a real canker worm, which is a phenomenon that really we want to eradicate or that the governments want to eradicate. You know, education is not something that people should, we should take uh, uh, we should take light or we should take it with a simple hand. It, this, is, this is a very important issue that the government has given confidence to private uh, sector or to private responsible people to handle. So uh, uh, people are not supposed to be acting as if we're not having measures or rules governing the lay private education. Talking so, about the existence of clandestine schools, yeah. uh, the government, you see the government always come together with some of the lay private school proprietors as well as some uh, uh, some officials of uh, the public schools that we have across the country yeah. a few weeks or few months to the next academic school year and it brings to question why the choice of this time to talk about clandestine schools when you had enough time maybe uh, during uh, during the school year or during uh, classes to talk about clandestine schools and what measures concretely are you putting in place to ensure that you put an end or you shut the doors of so many clandestine schools, as you call it. Um, I think this is when, when we, as we're talking about clandestine schools during the school year, these schools are for sometimes hidden that uh, uh, or uh, uh, the, the, the administrators are afraid of. Uh, uh, public uh, uh, destruction. What do you mean by afraid? Yeah, afraid of public destruction because when these schools, these clandestine schools, have already enrolled in many students, it is not possible. That is the, the same year. situation now. Prof. Yeah, it Up is not possible now. during the school year to close down the schools. So they seize the opportunity within this period, within the holidays, when the parents have not yet registered their children in many schools, to make sure that they give an alert. I should to assure so you parents. that yeah. more than fifty percent of parents have already uh, registered their children in no, some no, of these but, schools but and we, most of them are, are, are probably they have registered their children in some of these clandestine schools. No, it, it is not the matter, it's not the question that starts today or that the, the region or the secretary or the delegate has or even I think the last three meetings that we had uh, in Boninjo, uh, the, 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 the governor himself insisted in the situation. So many other, so many clandestine schools have been closed up by the, the authorities of this region, and uh, we are still insisting. If there are so many other clandestine schools, enlightening the parents that they shouldn't, they shouldn't never instruct or register their children in clandestine schools because these schools are so not how would the parents know that they, they have to know because they, 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 there's a list that there's a list of clandestine schools being published at the delegation or being listed everywhere that parents should be really they, they should really understand when they are registering or where they're going to register their children they should be able to ask they should ask uh, this is, is your school authorized? And if it is authorized, always we always paste the authorizations given by the government in every uh, each and every uh, school has to paste its own authorization. Let parents should go in and ask if these schools are having authorization. They should be pasted, and they will have an opportunity of knowing which school is a clandestine school and which is not a clandestine school. Because if you get register your child in a clandestine school, uh, I think that be, that might be on your risk because this school might be closed up. Uh, this schools might be closed up in the midst, in the middle of the year or even within this period that the campaign is going on closing down the clandestine schools. I think the Minister of Basic Education has already summoned about 100 and something clandestine schools to be closed down in Cameroon. And so, so we are alerting all the parents should be very careful when getting registered their own children in various schools. They should be able to ask. It is their duty. It is their right. They should ask to the proprietors or to the authorities of the school, please can you show me the authorization signed for the schools? They have been 
paste it. And the government is asking, the authorities are asking the principals and the proprietors to paste the authorizations signed by the government. And there are two, because we must understand that there are two authorizations. You might have the creation authorization without having the opening authorization. If you have the creation author authorization, you are not allowed to be functioning when you don't have an opening authorization. So the two authorizations are supposed to be presented to a parent or to the public that is maybe coming in for registrations and they look into the two authorizations if they it is the setting up authorization and the opening authorization if the two authorizations are there automatically they can then proceed with the registration of their children, yeah, children. so it is an alert that uh, the governor of the littoral region and even the the, the, re the regional delegate and the secretary for late private education has maybe uh, 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 insisted or organized in the whole region during the whole of this period of 40 days to make sure that parents are not duped to uh, uh, this most of these clandestine schools. And if you look at it, for example, Mimi, the, most of these schools have been found in small huts, eh? have been found in huts, have been found in small cases, have been found in small houses. But how can we tarnish education in our country? Please, education is the most important issue in our country. How can a school be organized or how can classrooms be organized in a small hut where you cannot find a bench or where you cannot find a seat or where children cannot sit comfortably? Where so children so, so does, have, does, please, does the learning please. environment does it, does if it, the learning do, environment, do you get to know exactly. the criteria of the legality or illegality of an institution from the learning environment? Not automatically, at all. automatically, before a school should, it is authorized, all these, there are rules and regulations governing the authorization of a lay private institution in our country. If the school is not authorized, you see it with your eyes that this type of institution or this type of uh, uh, sector, whether you call it school or what, can't be a school because a school can't be in a, a some sort of a environment that doesn't switch the learners that, that that is that is the most important thing so we, we we find most of the clandestine schools being in a remote area without it so no and benches, uh, no that's some and sort so of a call to yeah. for some of the proprietors of the lay private schools in the country to go or for or to go for the authorization of their various institutions because we see some of the interior neighborhoods that we have here in the city of Douala where there are no public institutions they do have parents like who have children that cannot go over long distances just because they want to go into a public school or want to attend a, a private school that is being authorized so the call is equally for the various proprietors to legalize their institutions as well Exactly. I think this is very simple. The procedures are there and which are very simple. Although uh, 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 the lay private, uh, the secretary for the lay private institution also insisted on these uh, mafia channels being carried out on granting uh, for uh, authorizations in some schools that are not following the, the, the real channel or the real uh, uh, procedure that is supposed to be followed. I think the procedures are there to... Who are you to, blaming now for following the poor, the wrong or the right procedure? But the people, I think the government has... the government The government has put in place uh, the rules and the, the good procedure of obtaining an authorization to create an institution. And these rules are not supposed to be dropped down or are not supposed to be crashed out. The rules are supposed to be followed in order that you should be granted an authorization. And that's simple. That people who want to, it is not, it is their own right for them to open an institution and if make the government it deems it necessary. So there are rules that are governing this procedure. I think people should follow the rules and they're going to be having, they will, they will be having authorizations of their schools. But they if they are not, automatically the government or any person in charge of education will be uh, uh, of alert to put or to shut down the schools. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Samuel Gube, for Thank joining us tonight much. on Talking Point. Thank you. And we hope to have you some other time again. Thank you very much, Mimi, and thank you for giving me the chance of, to explain once more uh, about education in our country. I should be thanking you for coming, Prof, and to our viewers, we thank you so much for having joined us in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television, wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Good evening to you once again.